Hi guys, it's Michelle, and today's video is going to be yet another TikTok conspiracy theories. These are actually, I feel like I always say this about all my videos, but these are some of my favorite to film because it's literally just me scrolling through what you guys tagged me in on TikTok and finding like the interesting parts and talking about the theories behind some of these things that we see on TikTok, which is so many, like so many good conspiracy theories are out there. I love TikTok as a platform. Like I'm literally <laughs> obsessed with it, um, if you will. And I just have so much fun on it. Before we get into those TikToks, I wanted to thank Nurex for sponsoring today's video. And it is why for this portion of the video, I have no face makeup on whatsoever. Obviously I have like eyelashes and eyeliner. I have no like foundation concealer, nothing because I want to talk about Nurex. So personally, I've always struggled with rosacea and also some like hormonal acne. For me, rosacea was always really bad. It's just like when your skin gets really red and it's super textured, especially in these areas for me personally. I tried so many different skincare products over the counter and nothing seemed to work, but Nurex stepped in. Nurex is a new way to get treatment for your skin without ever leaving your home, which was super cool and fun. Basically, you just share your acne history and a few photos onto Nurex's secured website. And then a licensed medical provider will evaluate your profile and your photos, and they will prescribe you medication for your skin. And it will ship right to your doorstep, which was my favorite part. I also felt like it was just super personal. And because I was like sending them pictures of my skin and you could choose if it was like a worse skin day for you or if you've had worse in the past and like this is like a good skin day so that they can really evaluate it and help you out. So I got prescribed the silic acid gel and I've been applying this twice a day on my face where I tend to have a lot more texture and a lot more rosacea. I'm not even kidding. My makeup goes on so much smoother. It's the best thing ever. I love actually like sitting down, enjoying my skincare, taking my time. I implement this into my routine. I light a candle. I like sing her and do my little skincare routine. And this has been such a great addition. Nurex also works with most insurance plans, but their out of pocket prices are honestly really affordable as well. Plus, like I said, Nurex can help you not with just acne, but any other skin conditions you may have. There's and anti-aging which is super great and it's never too early to start some anti-aging stuff so if you guys want to check Nurex out definitely go check them out and go to get slash michelle if you want to check them out please let me know if you do because i would love to hear your stories i'm just excited so yeah check them out but without further ado let's get into the tiktoks all right got my makeup on let's get into the tiktoks all right this first tiktok i saw this tiktok you guys tagged me in this and it's blew my mind first of all didn't know this was a thing so let me just play the tiktok i just found something out and um it's blowing my mind look at this i recently came across a video talking about how the calendar is supposed to have 13 months but the gregorian calendar changed it which is the calendar we follow today so i see this comment come to ethiopia you will see what you are saying we have 13 months within a year so someone commented right now we're in 2014 year of mercury today's date is thursday the 22nd of march 2014 our new year is on the 1st of september and i was like wait they're living in 2014 and we're living in 2022 is that why they say that all time is simultaneous like past present and future we're all living in it at once but then i saw this comment so if we're in 2014 according to your calendar 2020 gregorian calendar corresponds to 2012 your calendar when the truth started to come out and people woke so the Mayans were right. COVID really put everyone in 2020. Using your calendar, that means that the year 2012 was the end of the world. <laughs> Mind blown. Okay. So of course I had to look up when our calendar started. It was in 1582. Ethiopian calendar started around AD 400. So they are obviously way more correct than we are. How many years did we lose switching to the Gregorian calendar? Eight years. We're lost in translation when the switch to the Gregorian calendar was made to the 15th, in the 15th century. And if you guys remember, the Mayan calendar says that the end of the world would be on December 21st, 2012. And even according to the Julian calendar, that would be on January 21st, 2020, when COVID was at its peak. So I'm freaking out in the middle of the night and I message my dear friend, JK Ultra, Jen, if you guys aren't following her, please go follow her, who's super into all this stuff. And I was like, girl, I'm sure you know this, but did you know this? And her and I are both freaking out because we didn't know this. So she goes and converts what day is December 21st, 2012 in the Ethiopian calendar? What does it calculate to us? December 31st, 2019. So the last day of the world, according to the Mayan calendar, was on December 21st, 
2012 if we had kept up with the original calendar. But because we switched it, it was December 31st, 2019. So in 2020, the new world started. So we have already shifted into a new dimension. And this is why everything is so different. This makes so much sense. So essentially, this conspiracy theory is talking about how the Ethiopian calendar is very different from our calendar. It's several years behind, but it's probably more accurate, which is interesting. It goes into the whole theory of the Mayan calendar as well and talks about how the Mayan calendar said that the world would end in 2012 this was like december 2012 um but if you calculate it into the ethiopian calendar that date was december 31st 2019 which obviously as we know 2020 was when the world completely shifted probably forever with covid of course things are getting better things will get better and continue to get better but like i think things changed for good that like will never go back to the way that it was before which is pretty crazy so i don't know i just always remember that day 2012 scaring me i literally didn't go to school that day because i thought the world was gonna end or not even because i thought the world was gonna end i didn't think it was gonna end but i did think that um someone was gonna like bomb the school or something because they thought the world was ending i don't know i went to the mall is that much better? I don't know. Anyway, I thought this was super interesting. I don't know. I feel like it kind of makes sense. It's just really freaky that that date would be freaking December 31st, 2019. What are the odds? I guess one in 365, but still. And I think that we can all agree that there was a huge energy shift after COVID. Obviously the world didn't end, but maybe that's what the minds were predicting was the end of an era almost, which is relatively true. I thought this theory was incredibly interesting, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so the next theory that we're going to be talking about, this TikTok user posted from a Reddit thread of what the scariest theory known to man is. It is called solipsism, which I didn't know there was a word for this. If you've watched my channel for a minute, you probably know that I've talked about this theory before. So solipsism is the idea that only your consciousness is real. Everything else you experience only exists in your mind. There are no other people, no other beings in the universe. There is no universe as you know it. It's all a figment of your imagination. The universe is continuously created as you observe it with your senses and is destroyed when you no longer do. And I think that this is so crazy to me. I've been thinking about this since I like can remember. I always used to think like that everyone around me was just like robots. And I was like, how do I know that they're like living their lives and doing things? Sorry if this trips you out because this trips me out without me being there. Like if I'm not there and I'm not watching them like do something like if like my friends, like I'm not with anyone right now. So I'm not watching them do something. I'm not watching them exist. I'm not watching them, you know, do anything. So like, what makes you think they actually exist besides when you're talking to them or physically with them? And this freaks me the fuck out. I mean, this just trips me out. I used to like think about this for days as a child. Not sure that's like normal things that you should be like considering as a child, but I did think about this a lot. I used to just like beg my parents to please tell me that they actually existed when I wasn't like with them. Like I was like, please tell me like this is real life. Like, is this real? Like, are you real? We're like, girl, yeah, I don't know. I still kind of believe this theory, but even if this theory is true, I guess there's no point to like worrying about it because there's nothing you can do to control it. Tell me if you're real in the comments below. <laughs> I just think it's a crazy theory, but I also think that it makes a lot of sense because doesn't it make more sense that everything's just like in one person's mind versus like, that this entire universe and galaxies and all these people were created by someone. I don't know, I think that it kind of makes sense. It does genuinely trip me out though, and I feel like this is why I cannot do drugs, because I think I would be so stressed <laughs> because I have these thoughts sober. Yeah, I've had that thought since I was five. Like, I'm not even kidding, as long as I can remember, I used to be like, what if all my friends and all the people like don't actually exist unless I'm like with them? Um, and there's no way it's actually proof that that's true or false, so have fun with that. Anyway, <laughs> let's go on to a lighter note. Um, we're gonna talk about this theory that you guys have tagged me in so much, which I think is, honest to God, the one of the funniest theories that I've ever seen because it's so, like, stupid but like in a funny way. Um, and it's people believe that Leah Michelle is illiterate. I risked my life to watch the Leah Michelle is illiterate video. And here is a summary of it for you. It started as a joke between two friends who read Naya Rivera's autobiography, which mentions her feud with Leah Michelle. Tim Conway, when guest starring, brought his granddaughter on set and he being a comedic actor wanted to improvise, which Leah Michelle did not want to do. Michelle's attitude was so bad it caused his granddaughter to cry. Michelle would lock herself in her trailer. 
Whenever Rivera was asked about the feud, she would always just tell the interviewer to read her book. Michelle never mentions this situation, led the two presenters of the theory to conclude that Leah Michelle can't read, so she just has her lines read to her because she was a child actor on Broadway and she just never had time to go to school. The amount of times I've been tagged in this, I'm surprised that anyone actually wants me to talk about it because I literally think it's like 100% a joke, but it's really freaking funny. Like literally, if you type in Leah Michelle, the first thing, Leah Michelle husband. The second thing, Leah Michelle illiterate. And I just, I can't. I think that's really funny. So the basis of the theory is that because Leah Michelle was a Broadway child and a child actor, she didn't have time to go to school and therefore never learned how to read and was always fed her lines. After Glee, Leah Michelle went on to do Scream Queens, which was okay because Ryan Murphy created both shows and he apparently knows her secret and feeds her the lines. I don't know why this is a real theory, but it's really fucking funny. And the theory continues by the fact that Leah Michelle apparently never uses her own phone like see pictures of her assistant using her phone for her and what killed me i literally have chills right now because it was so funny was that they um the theory goes on to be like leah michelle doesn't write her own instagram captions unless it's just emojis i want to put this part that this tiktok user said because the way she put it was so funny her instagram captions if it's just an emoji it is done by michelle herself if there's words with no emoji it was written by somebody else if it is words with an emoji, it's been written by somebody else, but she can pick the emojis. Not them letting Leah Michelle pick the emojis. <laughs> like, I mean, this is not real, but it's really funny. Um, apparently there's a picture of her like signing her name, but her name was already written and she just like drew a line underneath it. So this theory didn't even start on TikTok. It all started in 2018 with this podcast called One More Thing. And they uploaded a 40 minute video of them talking about the theory. And it's honestly so freaking funny like it's just funny i don't know and i lee michelle talked about it and just like thought it was funny too the way the internet is sometimes is just genuinely joyful lee michelle being illiterate gave me so much joy or at least the internet thinking it because it's just funny to me that first of all that there are people who actually believe it second of all i don't know it's just funny all right so the next theory i want to talk about regards johnny depp and amber heard this trial has been very talked about this week i'm sure you guys have heard about it this tiktok user and a bunch of other people on tiktok were talking about how how Amber is like mirroring what Johnny is wearing to court and at first I was like what I was reading some of the comments talking about how it's psychological it's pretty obvious that like I think she is copying what he's wearing I don't know what her intentions are behind it a lot of people seem to believe that she's really twisted and is like trying to mock him or like just like rile him up in some sort of way which I could based on the testimony so far I could see how that would happen if you haven't please just look into this case it's insane and there are so many videos of them talking to each other and just the way that she talks i just have never heard anyone gaslight in that way and it was just pretty absurd to hear so i put nothing past her on this point like reading the comments on this tiktok really is what like got me interested in the theory as a whole people believe it's a way that she's trying to make johnny feel crazy in a sense or just like she's trying to mock him and just like get him a rise out of him basically. And I don't know, I found it really interesting because she really is copy. I would love to know your thoughts overall on this trial and this case. What do you guys think about her mirroring his outfits? I think this is a really interesting theory and I've been seeing it all over TikTok. There's so many theories about this all over TikTok. So if you guys are into it, then definitely go check it out. But anyway, that's all the TikToks for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that we lightened the mood a bit with Leah Michelle. I know, I don't know why so many people have been requesting me to talk about it because I feel like, do people think that's real? It's like a joke, right? It, me not knowing. I am always so behind on jokes. It's so bad. Anyway, that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these TikToks. I would love to hear them. And if you have any more TikToks, definitely tag me in them. I love TikTok conspiracy theories. They're so good. But that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram because I'm always posting really dope ass shit on there. Subscribe for new videos every week and I will see you guys later. Bye. Bye.